In this video, I'd like to show you how to import a DXF as a background. Just like we use a drawing grid, we'll be using a DXF behind the model in order to click on it and draw our model. So what we want to do in order to do that, we're going to click on this, uh, this button right here, which helps us modify the drawing grid. And we'll go to, instead of our drawing grids that we have here, rectangular grid increments, or if we're going to use a radial grid, what we're going to do is choose this third option, which is import a DXF. When I click on that, it looks just like the other options where we can drop that drawing grid in any origin, but we'll also need to answer some information about the DXF itself. We can change the scale uh, factor for that for that DXF, we can change the units, or we can change the DXF plane that we want to import. We also have the ability to import arcs and circles, so we would want to maybe indicate the angle of increments that that arc or circle would be broken up into as segments. Um, for our model, I just did a straight line, um, and I'm going to import that. So what I'll do is I browse to the location, and I'm going to go right to my CRISA folder, and I laid out here what I call the building outline. I'm going to open that up. Now what I can do is I can import all the layers or I can select from a list. Since I only in did one layer in my DXF, it's just going to bring that default layer. But another option you have is to turn the background from gray to use a different color in here. So you can choose a different background color for each layer you choose to bring in. I'm going to leave the default gray and I'm going to say done and automatically my background of my model gets carried in from the DXF that I saved earlier. So what I can do now is draw my slab right on top of this building outline. So I'm going to click on draw slabs. I'm going to maybe choose here instead of a 12, I'm going to say a 24 inch slab. And I can then click on wherever I have an intersection. So it allows me to click on the ends of lines uh, where you have lines intersecting. As I mentioned, you can do circular arcs or, or you can do circles, polylines. So any of those there you can click on. I'm going to almost done with the slab here at the very last one. I double click there and it creates the edge of my building. Now the, the building edge will go all the way around, but one other tool I want to use while I'm in here, since this would probably be the very edge of my building, I might need a little bit more slab edge in order to accommodate that building and that line load that might come down in this. So what I will do here is I'm going to actually go ahead and offset the slab by a certain distance. So this is a new tool that will allow you to create an offset distance. I'm going to say three feet and I'm just going to then cre extend this slab edge by clicking on the slab and I see that it, it then increases by three feet out of from every side. The interior there, that slab edge uh, that I drew previously is still there, but that is really just a drawing grid. So what I can do is I can just turn off that drawing grid and it's there and it's gone. So then I can at that point keep going and maybe apply all my line loads and keep drawing my slab. But to review, what we looked through here was how to import a DXF using the tools here from the drawing grid as well as using the offset slab feature.